Hello, welcome to part two. If you haven't seen part one yet, you should probably watch that first. In part one, we created a cartoonish shader and we learned how to create uh, black ink outlines using freestyle built into Blender 2.8. In this video, we will use Blender's compositor and put it all together and make it look like a watercolor painting. So, lot to do, let's get started. Okay, for this part, I'm going to use an old model um, just to have a more interesting result. I'm gonna take this model that I created from this Zoom H4n audio recorder. I have already added the tune shader to all of these materials and then changed the color to make it look a little bit more interesting. I have also applied all the modifiers and over here we can see that the boolean modifier in 2.8 didn't quite work correctly, but uh, we don't care about that at the moment. Um, applying the modifiers, uh, by the way, reduces the render time for the freestyle pass a lot, like by half. So I would suggest that you give that a try. Right, so I applied all the modifiers, I gave them all the tune shader and some colors. And I have this animation here where I just rotate the camera and the lights. So I don't know, let's go somewhere like here where it looks interesting. And if I hit F12 now, then this is the result that we get. So this is a very uh, sharp, very crisp rendering of the model with all the tune shaders on it. And you've seen in the last video that if we enable uh, freestyle now, that Blender will always add the freestyle pass on top of this and the final result for the compositor will always be the image with the freestyle lines on it. But that's not what I want because I want to manipulate this image and make it look like watercolors separately from the freestyle lines. So how do we get just the freestyle lines onto a transparent background? Um, I haven't found an easy way to do this in Eevee but luckily we can switch over to cycles and do that. So first of all, I've already created a scene here. This is my one scene in this file and I called it Eevee. Now I will create a new scene, scene with a link objects and call that freestyle. And uh, this scene, I'm going to switch over to cycles. So over here, we get a cycles rendering I might switch this down to a solid rendering. Then down here, the sampling, we can turn down to one sample because we're not rendering anything, which we just want this uh, scene, this pass to just render the freestyle lines. Okay, so freestyle is enabled, samples down to one. And then in here, we go to filter and we turn everything off except for freestyle. We don't want anything rendered, we just want the freestyle pass. In the freestyle settings, just like in the last video, we have a line set. For this now we can leave uh, the default settings. In the freestyle line style, we have a thickness and we want to add this along stroke, multiply, curve, that thing again and then of course for the geometry you can do the 2d offset with the animation for rendering and a nice looking animation if you want to so i save this quick and if i hit f12 you can see this was the cycles rendering pass that just flew by because we're not rendering anything it's just transparent and now it's doing the freestyle and you can see here that this takes quite a while. This is a rather complicated high poly mesh. And just the freestyle pass takes about 20, 22 seconds here. And voila, here we go. We just have the freestyle lines on transparent. Okay, so now we have two scenes. The EV scene, F12, looks like this and the freestyle scene 
is just the outline. And now we go to the compositor and we can take our two uh, render layers here and use a freestyle scene here. And now we can do stuff and put it all together. Okay, so this is the very crisp and sharp sort of cartoonish rendering. And this is, uh, and this is the, just the outlines, which we can't see unless we put them into an alpha over. Now we have a white background and just the outlines. And now we're going to work with this. So first up, let's take this render layer and make it look more like watercolor. So if you look at reference images of watercolor, first up, you will notice that um, it, it usually colors uh, blend together a little bit where there's more water on the brush. You get sort of blurry patches and then sharper patches. And of course you can't draw perfectly straight lines with a brush or maybe some people can, but what we want is sort of an imperfect, um, kind of messy, runny, blurry watercolor. Okay, so first up, we're gonna mess up this image a little. And for that, we're going to take an input texture node, then go over to the texture here, um, use clouds, and we're going to use the clouds in here. And we will warp this image so that we don't have any of those super sharp, perfectly straight edges anymore. And we do that with a distort displace. Okay, put that in here. And what we can do here is we can actually plug an image in here. So for example, if I plug this uh, texture in here now, we're displacing this image using this texture on the X axis. And this is not really visible because this grayscale image only has values between zero and one. So we're only displacing it by a maximum of one pixel. We can do a converter math, put that in here, set it to multiply to something like five or 10. And you can already see we get this warping effect. Well, this looks nice already. So I might need something in here later. Okay, so we're warping it on the X axis like this. Now let's also do this on the Y axis. Maybe take a different factor like five or, or let's say seven plug that into the Y and we notice nothing changes. That is because in this vector setting here by default, it only changes the X by this factor. So we add Y one as well. And now we have this sort of wavy distortion that gives it more of a watercolor feel. Now, also we want to blur all of this. Okay, so how do we blur this? We take a filter blur node, plug that in here. And by checking, uh, using the Gaussian blur and then checking variable size, what we can do now is we can plug an image in here. So again, we take another multiply, use our uh, texture that we have here, this cloud texture, and plug this into the size. And then we also have to give it some X and Y here. So let's just put in 0.5, for example. And you can see here, we get blurry patches and sharp patches. Okay, now we have wavy, blurry, watercolor style. And of course you can do a lot more here, but I think uh, this is fine for this tutorial. Now let's put our black ink lines on top of that. So we need a color alpha over, put the black, 
put the black lines on top of our watercolor and it looks like this and all we really need to do before that is place this image onto a background maybe turn this background a little bit more like brownish yellowish give it more like a paper feel I think those black lines are not thick enough, so let me just go into the freestyle scene. And then over here, thickness, turn this up to five again. Go back to the EV scene, because that's where we have our node set up, and save and hit F12. The EV scene renders very fast. And then all of this here, 20, 22 seconds is just freestyle rendering, so we have to wait for that. Okay, this is the result, looking cool already. Now, on top of that, we are going to add a little bit of a vignette. So, uh, matte lips mask in the center, x.5, y.5, the width should be 0.8, the height should be 0.8. So this is what we get. Now we pipe that through a uh, blur node, fast Gaussian relative 0.2, I mean 20. <laughs> okay, now we take a color mix, and multiply this vignette multiply this vignette on top of it so we have this turn on the factor so we just have, have a little bit of a vignette effect like this okay and then we want this whole image to look like paper maybe this is very bad paper but anyways i'm just going to take the same texture here with another multiply node and just multiply this texture on top of my image like this and turn down the factor so that we get this subtle cloud texture all over and we're done so this is just one image of an animation that we can render out what do we have we have a very kind of blurry rendering of our model we have the black ink outlines and i'm going to put something in here because those black outlines they have very uh, sharp edges so i will do another filter blur probably fast gaussian relative 0.2 um, point one, yeah, point two. Just so that these lines are not uh, as sharp looking. Okay, so this is one hundred percent zoom. Maybe it looks a little better. Okay, so this is our node setup for the compositor. We have the sharp, crisp rendering from Eevee with our tune shader on it we have the cycles rendering of just the freestyle outline first we displace this image maybe we can look at it like this so this is the original first we displace it to put it make it like wavy looking but then we blur it together also using this texture as the size input for our Gaussian blur. So we get blurry patches and then sharper patches, which is kind of when you look at watercolor images, what they look like. And we put this whole thing onto a almost white background, place our black lines on top of that, and then just add a vignette and this paper texture in the background. 
Okay, so if you want to pause the video at this point, this is basically the compositing node setup that you need. And then you add some camera movement, maybe move the lights around a little, rotate your model, and this is what you get. All right, that's it guys, this is part two. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and share the video with others. If you create anything with this method, then please send it to me on Instagram. Link is down below. Also, write a comment. If you haven't already, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.